Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today, we are honored to welcome the founder of Busy Minds Boxed, Christina Lubowski. Welcome, Christina. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, you're welcome. It's our pleasure. So, Christina, let's start a little bit about your background, and you have a personal story about uh, three grandparents that were diagnosed with dementia, and then we'll learn how you came to create this remarkable resource for uh, families and loved ones with dementia. Thank you so much. Yes. So I, over the course of the last six years, I've had three different grandparents diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Um, And it felt kind of like once we got the one settled, the next one was diagnosed. And it was just, it was a very, very difficult time for the family. So my father's mother was the first to be diagnosed Um, And she was living a couple states away. So we brought her close to us to keep an eye on her. And as soon as she was settled, my mother's father started showing signs. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was really difficult, but at least we sort of knew a little bit more about how to navigate the whole disease, even though every situation is different. Um, And during COVID, um, my grandmother, so my grandfather's wife, Um, was taking care of him. She was his primary caregiver, Um, but they were locked down and his disease progressed very rapidly. Um, I'm assuming in part because they were so isolated. And, um, you know, he was on a pretty steady decline when we started seeing some really abnormal behaviors from her. And actually she was in the hospital and got her diagnosis just a few weeks before he passed away from the same disease. And so, um, you know, we were at the end of one journey and the beginning of another, and she was so used to becoming his or to being his wife and his caregiver. And here she is confused and lonely and bored And that's sort of how Busy Minds came about. And in the middle of all that, I decided to quit my corporate job and go back to school and become a gerontologist to help my family navigate through the ups and downs of Alzheimer's and to just sort of know what to expect and be able to guide them through it. Yeah. When you were first going through this, you know, beginning stages and journey, I know you said it it led you to go back to school to get your gerontology degree, but what resources were you finding helpful at that time before you made that determination to go back to school? Because that's quite a commitment to leave a corporate job, go back to college, get a whole, I'm assuming a whole different industry and specialty in healthcare and gerontology. Did you guys, was it because of a lack of resources available or what? You know, we found it just hard to know what to expect. I think Um, When you first get a diagnosis, um, regardless of whether it's your parent or grandparent or, you know, some extended family, you never really know what to expect because it's not something you necessarily pay attention to in the beginning. And I felt like the resources weren't really and the advice wasn't really matching up with um, what symptoms she was showing or, you know, the situations that she was finding herself in it was really hard to navigate. And again, she was living a couple of states away and we didn't know how severe her disease was at that time. So we were doing our best. My dad was driving like eight hours a day just to go see her um, and, you know, help her, you know, go get groceries and cook some meals for the week and stuff like that. And um, it just felt at that time, I mean, this was back in 2015, 2016, there weren't a whole lot of resources out there at that time. Okay, sure. So let's fast forward. You go back to college and you get your gerontology degree. What was the next step? So truthfully, I didn't know at that time. So I had been working in um, the advertising industry and I was an editor. And so I thought the natural progression for me would be 
um, you know, getting involved in the dissemination of health information and helping people to understand, um, especially about dementia and brain health. Um, once we got that second diagnosis, while I was in the middle of school, I decided to sort of focus more on that. But um, when we got the third diagnosis, it was after I had graduated. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with a degree. Um, I wasn't working in a senior living facility like many of my fellow students were. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then the idea for Busy Minds, I, I woke up with it one morning. Um, and that's kind of how I got my my start in the world of gerontology officially. Okay. How long has Busy Minds Box been around? It started in 2021. So I had the idea in April um, about a month after my grandmother was diagnosed, we had been bringing her activities and things to keep her sort of engaged um, and not just sitting in front of the TV and, you know, like just blindly watch, staring at it. Um, so I would bring her things like crossword puzzles or just like puzzles and games and stuff to keep her active. And so uh, about a month later, I started it and the first boxes went out um, in November of that year. Oh, wow. Okay. And so what's some, what's some of the activities? Like how do you, when you sit down to do, and it's like a monthly box, correct? Yep. How do you determine what activities and, you know, different, you know, stimulating, you know, engagement things, how are you, how are you preparing the box? Like what, what do you look at and how do you determine what a good activity is? Is it holiday based, seasonal based, a little bit of both? Walk us through that. Yeah, sure. So every month is a different theme. So we're always learning about something different and we're always engaging in something different. And there's a lot of research out there that a variety of activities can really help us um, engage different parts of our brains. So as I sit down to plan the box, I'm looking at the box as a whole at, at all the activities. There's about four to six in each box. Um, and I'm making sure that we have enough variety in there because even somebody without dementia, like I don't want to do the same thing every single day, you know, like we have our moods fluctuate quite a lot. And so I like to make sure there's enough variety in there that there's different levels of difficulty for people who, you know, um, may need a simpler activity or somebody who can tackle something a little more difficult. Um, and then, you know, there's, um, just a planning process that I make sure that there's no two activities that are kind of in the same line. Um, and then we go from there. So the box you had sent us, would that have been a winter box or is that just a typical activity box, no seasonal designation? It Yeah, the, the <laughs> box that I sent you didn't really have a designation. Some of them do, like our February box that we just sent out. Um, it was kind of twofold for Valentine's Day and for American Heart Month. But the box that I sent you was kind of um, not seasonal. It was just about uh, reminiscence therapy, really. I was going to say, was, was gonna say it seemed like the theme was really making memories, right? Because yes. like you sent this nice postcard here that talks about, you know, the items that are in the box. So you had the what's your story, a little scrapbook that you can make with your loved one. It's make your own memory box. So you're using a sticker and gold corners to decorate your memory box and use it as a special place to store photos, notes, and memories. The one I really like that I would actually probably use myself is the forget me not note holder. So you say assemble your note holder using the materials provided, place it in a familiar place and use it for notes and reminders you don't want to forget. And another neat one I really thought was cool was uh, the Merriam-Webster word game. So you actually have a Merriam-Webster uh, booklet, if you will, or activity book where you write down stories and notes, but this year refreshing your brain and find inspiration with a collection of word games. So this helps people to, you know, use that stimulation to try to come up with the words, which, you know, being in gerontology, I'm sure you'll uh, agree with because you made it. You're, you're wanting to, you know, continue using your vocabulary and use association between words and definitions or words and objects. So what would, is there different like reminiscent memory activity boxes or is this kind of a one size fits all? So you might see this one more than once if you're on a 12 month subscription or does it change up? How does that work? 
so every box is completely different and the activities inside are different. Um, you know, we might use the same ideas. So there might be something else. Um, for example, uh, back in November, it was a gratitude box. So it was partially about Thanksgiving and partially just practicing gratitude, which can help us feel more positive. And so there was a thanks bank. And that encouraged you to write down something you were grateful for and put it in this little bank that we made together. Um, so it's sort of like a memory box in that you are, you know, putting in things that you're thankful for or ideas that you're thankful for. So, you know, in the same line of thinking, but not quite the same. Okay. Now, are your grandparents, are are they still living? Um, just one of them is. Okay. Do they use the Busy Minds box? Yes. So um, my the, my grandmother who inspired the idea who I would take activities to, she's still living and she is, I call her one of my product testers. She has progressed pretty significantly since she was first diagnosed, but my mother uses it and uh, my two aunts, they use it as connection tools. So, you know, they'll go in and do the activities with her because she's not quite able to start on her own as many people with dementia aren't. And so they use it as a way to um, engage with somebody with dementia and not just kind of sit in the room and, you know, ask them how they're feeling. And then you have that dead silence. So um, they use it as a way to help her feel like she's got purpose and um, like she's really helping them in doing something like this. Sure. Is your grandmother in a facility now or is she in a home? She is. Yeah. She's in a memory care facility. Do the other uh, residents, do they use the Busy Minds box or the activity yeah, directors? They they so the um, facility she's in also subscribes to the boxes, okay. um, and it's my understanding that they actually take the contents of the box and they split the activities up based on people's interests and their skill levels. So they're able to kind of disseminate these activities to multiple people. Okay, so and that brings up my next question. So let's say one of our viewers or listeners, let's say their loved one is in the early stages. So. Would you say most of these activities are appropriate for early stage? Yes. So I would say that they're appropriate for both people without dementia. Like I have a lot, um, some people who are just homebound and aren't able to get out, but they still want to stay active. So they do it. Somebody in the early stages should be able to. Um, our custom activities come with a set of directions and then also a link and a QR code to a video tutorial. So, you know, people learn and execute differently. So there's multiple ways to figure out how to do the activities. So somebody with early stage dementia should be able to read the directions step by step. They're broken down pretty simply. Um, or, you know, if they're able to get online and or if their caregiver is able to get online and just show them a video so they can walk through it step by step, they're able to do that too. Now, what if somebody listening or watching has a loved one that's in the later stages are there boxes that might be more specific towards d different stages of Alzheimer's and dementia, or is it every box is the same? Because you, you mentioned custom boxes, so that's why I'm trying to find out, like, how do you make the custom boxes based on their needs or... So it, it's just custom every month. Like we create gotcha. the custom okay. activity. We create some custom activities and then some of them, like the, I didn't write the Marion Webster <laughs> word searches. Um, so we put those together. It's the same box every month, but um, for somebody in the middle or later stage, um, it's usually a caregiver that walks through it with their person with dementia. Okay. That's, that's what I was kind of wondering if it's, if you have activities that are appropriate, no matter the stage. They should be. I mean, I think in the later stages, um, maybe not just because a lot of their abilities are kind of diminished by that point. So I'm not sure if it would be appropriate for the later stage, but um, for middle stage, you know, that's where my grandmother is right now. She's, you know, losing a lot of her words, but she's still able to do a lot of these activities. Wonderful. Does she know that she was the inspiration? I hope so. I mean, I definitely told her um, and she understood it when it first. OK, launched. so she was able to. OK, that that's that's wonderful. So what's some of the feedback you've received from uh, the facilities that subscribe to Busy Minds Box? They appreciate having a secondary um, form of activities that their activity directors don't necessarily have to sit and plan out because 
it does become a lot, you know, when you're responsible for continuous activity planning. So I know that it gives them kind of a little bit of a break if they can plan a busy minds activity, which has, um, you know, directions and a video that they can play. I know that they also use it for the residents who don't want to necessarily come outside of their room. So some of their residents just don't like to participate in group activities. Right. So they use them as one-on-one activities. Um, so, you know, an activities director might go into someone's room and say, hey, you want to help me with this? And everyone likes being helpful. So, you know, they'll usually engage and the activity is selected based on their interests and their le- their skill level. So um, you know, they'll sit down and do these activities together. Oh, that's great. Have you received any feedback of any situations where maybe somebody was very isolated or just not wanting to engage, but busy minds helped them to kind of open up any, any meaningful stories you'd like to share? You know, I haven't received that feedback just yet, but I have seen a lot of the activities. Some of them are um, door hangers and things like that. And I see them up on the residents' doors when I go. And I even saw one up in the nurse's station. Um, So I think, you know, just seeing that up there and knowing that people are really engaging and proud of what they're creating and seeing it up on their doors is it's very meaningful and it makes me feel like, oh, I've helped someone. And that was the whole idea behind this was helping people to be active and engaged and use their brains in the background, but enjoy what they're doing every day. Absolutely. So how do you come up with the activities each month? Do you have a a team or do you just get to work once this month's box goes out, you're starting to look at the activities for next month? Where do you come up with the different ideas? Um, Truthfully, I'm on Pinterest a lot. Um, I, um, you know, I'll look at things that other recreational therapists have done or other activity directors and try to adapt it for in the box. Um, you know, a lot of people who use these at home, like if, if they're a home health aide or if they're a caregiver, they don't necessarily have the access that to an activities director. So I try to do my best to give them all the tools that they'll need to do these activities so they don't have to go out and have something on their list, another thing to take care of. So, um, yeah, I just sit down and I try to see what can work and, you know, what how how I can craft these activities to give them everything that they need to do them. Is it a long process, Christina, when you're planning each month? It seems like it'd be (laughs) overwhelming at times. It can be. I feel like I've found a good system now, especially that I'm designing more and more custom activities. Um, So I feel like I've kind of hit my groove. I do take like a one day a month and plan for the next box so that at least I have an idea of the things that I want to source for those boxes. Um, but yeah, it can get a little complicated. I feel like I've, you know, kind of hit a groove though. What's one of your favorite activities? Oh man. Um, I talked about the thanks bank a little bit earlier and I really liked that because someone gave me the feedback that it's not only a great activity. It was it was called the 30 days of thanks and then this thanks bank. So it was a mason jar and you know we painted the mason jar and we had a sticker that said thanks bank that we put on there. And then it came with a little notepad and on the notepad it had 30 pages and you were encouraged to write out what you were grateful for and pop it in there. And it was just a way to practice positivity and kind of help people if they were feeling depressed or anxious, you know, kind of turn their minds away from that and towards something more positive. But it was suggested to me by a couple of different people that it was so great to be able to share those things with their own loved ones, you know, like as a family activity, you take at the end of the month, you empty it out and you say, oh, these are all the things that I was grateful for. And so I think that was one of my, um, my favorite ones. The Thanks bank. Yeah. What um, do you have any activities you want to share for March's box? Have you started? I have started. So the theme um, I'll give you a sneak peek is birds. And so um, we're going to be putting together a quill. Um, So we're going to be making our own quill with like a little feather hanging off of it. Um, And we're going to be learning origami. All fun. So it seems like, you know, you're, you're really touching on all of the sensories, right? You know, the touch, the feel. Do you have anything that involves smell? 
Uh, yes, that will be in April's box, actually. Okay. Without giving too much away. Oh, no, don't give it away. I have an activity plan to do that. And I'm always looking for ways to incorporate more things like smell or music, which is hard to put inside of a box without, you know, making somebody go online to listen to a playlist or something. It's a little harder, um, but I'm always searching for ideas. So if anyone out there has any ideas, I would love to hear them. And so people watching or listening that may want to order a box, can they order a one-time box or is it all uh, is it all uh, subscription based? They can order a one-time box. So I usually have some boxes left over. So as soon as the boxes ship out to the subscribers, um, I list it online also. So if they would rather just go on and select a box one by one, or if they liked a certain theme, they can go on and get that instead of the monthly subscription. Okay. And is it all um, one size box or do you have like bigger boxes and smaller boxes? How does that work? So right now we just have the, this box right here. Um, it's a large box and it holds about four to six activities. The ones right below it are our former boxes. We enlarged it so we can include more like larger uh, word searches and things like that. Um, but we do have some of these and right now we have some mystery bundles. So if you wanted to buy something like just puzzles and games or just arts and crafts. We have some of those available and they would come in the smaller boxes. In the smaller boxes, okay. And um, where do you see yourself in Busy Minds box in the next five years? That's a good question. I, my goal What's is- What's your goal, just, yeah. Yeah, to help as many people as possible. So, you know, when I first started out with this, the idea was I really wanted to help my grandma. And if our family was going through this and we had already been through it, this was the third time. And it was just dawning on me that we hadn't really engaged my other grandparents. We were so busy taking care of everything else that engaging their brains and making them feel like they had a sense of purpose just fell by the wayside. And I didn't want that to happen with my grandma because I felt like I had learned third time's the charm. Like I've learned by then, but other families must be going through that. And I wanted to create a resource that other families could use so that it doesn't fall by the wayside for them. So I think in five years, I just really hope to be helping as many people as I can. That's ultimately just what I want. Well, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's fair to say that you do this out of a, a love, not out of a financial purpose, but it's out of a love for helping others and honoring your grandmother and trying to help families who may be in a situation like you and your family were, you know, five, six years ago now. Um, is that fair to say? It's absolutely, yes, 100% accurate. I, I truly, you know, this isn't like some means to an end. It's not some way to make millions of dollars. Um, I truthfully, like, don't care about that at all. I truly just want to hear from people like, oh, we had so much fun when we sat down and we did this activity from this month and um, you know, this really helped me connect with my loved ones. Um, one time we had this game called, I made a game called Chatty Cathy. Um, and it's just a, a conversation starter game. And I've heard from a couple of different people that it helped them learn stuff about their loved ones that they didn't know before. And with dementia, you know, you're going to lose those memories at some point. So to get those and kind of get those out of your loved one before it's gone, that's priceless. So, right. um, yeah, truly just want to help people reconnect with their loved ones. Have any, have any families reached out to you? Um, so you were talking about the chatty Kathy story. Have, are there any stories or anything, any feedback you've gotten that maybe stands above the rest that you'll just really, and it all means something to you, but is there any that means maybe more than others? You know, I, I can't think of one specific instance, but I've heard a lot of that. Just, um, you know, this helped me reconnect with my loved one or I, I was clueless as to what to do. And, you know, now I have a way to connect. And I think the connection, like using it as a connection tool is the thing that I hear most commonly and the thing that I'm most grateful for. Because when I started, it was a way to improve brain health, right? These activities touch on different parts of our brains, you know, our planning or problem solving or language skills. Um, and that was originally the goal, but it kind of morphed into this connection tool and I didn't intend for it to be, but I love that idea of it, 
you know, giving people um, a way to feel close to their loved one in spite of a disease. Right. Well, and you mentioned with uh, Busy Minds Box that, you know, it helps with decision making, planning, recognition, coordination, matching, visualization, motor skills for gripping, turning, pulling and pushing and creativity. I mean, in these in, you know, we talk to a lot of various dementia experts in, you know, that is the one common thread and theme is, you know, a person with dementia, when you get a diagnosis, it's not a death sentence. You know, for example, I don't know if you know uh, Dr. Jennifer Butte, if that name sounds familiar. That rings a bell, sure. Yeah. So she's a founder of GloriousDay.org, and I highly recommend people visiting that website. And she's very active with a support group on Facebook as well. But what really makes her interesting is she was a practicing GP over in the UK. So she's a medical doctor. And all of a sudden, you know, and she was ahead of a lot of different, you know, panels and boards and you know, very renowned over there in the healthcare community. And she was sharing with us recently, you know, she went into a board meeting that she was the chair of with people she's worked with for 20, 30 years. And she goes in and she's like, well, hi, you know, it's nice to meet you. I don't believe we've ever met. Well, at first her colleagues are thinking she's just being silly or whatever. And soon they realize, no, she's being serious. Well, she ended up diagnosing herself with dementia. So imagine being a doctor diagnosing yourself with dementia, but here now she's leading this wonderful advocacy and website and organization to help educate the public about what dementia is. And just because you get a diagnosis, it's not a death sentence. The person doesn't get a diagnosis, then go home and stops, you know, contributing and living. And I think that's an important theme, like what you're doing with Busy Minds Box for families who may not be educated, who may not have any awareness, kind of maybe fair, maybe not fair, how maybe your family was those years ago with your grandparents, you're showing also to the loved ones, this person still has capabilities and still has something to offer, which I think, you know, yes, it's good mentally and cognitively and physically and emotionally for that person with dementia to be engaging in all these activities and all these different sensory exercises, but it's also good for the family, loved ones, or even the support staff in these facilities or caregivers in the homes. Wow, I didn't know you could still do that when you had dementia. Because there is still, unfortunately, and it's getting better, but there's still such a lack of awareness and education that maybe they would not even bother trying to involve somebody with dementia in an activity or an arts or a craft because, well, they have dementia, they can't do it. But with Busy Minds Box, you're showing that people are still able to do it and they want to do it. You're so right. And, you know, it's something my family was very guilty of thinking like, oh, they're just not able to do it. So we'll just put them on the side and we'll continue on or we'll, you know, we didn't know how to adapt or, you know, include the person with dementia because we just thought that they were far beyond that. Um, and when you engage with them and you, you know, you try different angles and, you know, it won't work every single day, um, but there are times where you can have really great, really meaningful breakthroughs with that person with dementia, and they're still there. They're still in there, and we want to make sure that we are giving them a voice and that you know they feel like they have a purpose. That's so important, especially to their overall mood and you know how willing they are to to work with you on things. So, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think it's tremendous. Um, so for Busy Minds Box, uh, you gave us a video that we'll have playing here for our viewers. The listeners can go to our official website to see the video you provided. But we're going to have the links to the main website up on the screen, along with your subscription page, the YouTube channel, and you also write a blog, correct? I do, yes. So I put the um, activities on the blog, and then we also have articles just about maintaining brain health or things like that. So just trying to create some of that awareness that I know our family had been looking for back when we were first dealing with this. What's the what's the most recent uh, article you guys have published? Um, right now, it's we are releasing the activity blog posts. So how to put together the activities and then links to the or the, the videos are embedded in there. Um, so how to go through those and some of the benefits of these of going through these activities for February. Okay, so you have a video for each activity to sh kind of like a how-to? 
Yeah, for each of our custom activities um, or anything that we think needs a little bit more explanation, um, I, I record a video. So it's both, you know, talking like this, but then a hands down view so you can watch me do it. Um, and then we post those on YouTube. So they're also on our blog. Wonderful. One last thing I do want to make comment on is the packaging is just tremendous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the let's see if I can get it here. So like the forget me not holder comes in a really nice purple. Would you call this like a lace bag? Maybe I think it's organza is what they call it. OK, but it's like a mesh, a mesh bag. Um, and then uh, the memory uh, what the memory box rather comes in a really nice box that was, you know, closed and then, you know, you can put it away and you, you know, provide some glue for it as well. But the one thing that really struck me, Christina, was, and there's a photo frame where you can put a photo of a loved one in it. But I, I like this. This was a really clever idea. You know, you, what kind of material is this? Um, it's just, it's heavier, like it's not quite, um, not it's, it's like paper basically, but a thicker paper. Thicker. So it kind of, helps to um, support everything as it's being yeah. shipped, but then you can use it as an activity, like to protect your working surface when you're doing it. I was gonna it. say, it's like, a, like an activity mat. Yeah, basically. And then you put this really nice sticker on where it says, you know, what, we hope you love the activities inside this Busy Minds box. Use this paper to also protect your activity surface. So, you know, that that's a clever idea. Cause I know even, even for like, um, my kids, right? They'll come home with a craft or an activity and it's paints or markers or, you know, glitter, glitter's the worst, but there's nothing to put down on their activity table. So we ended up buying just like a reusable, you know, place map, but it's like a table length one. Um, so anytime they're doing activities like that, we protect the surface. So, but people won't need to worry about that because you provide that also. Yeah, it was just an idea. You know, I wanted to find a good way to ship things that was somewhat eco-friendly. And I was like, oh, well, this can just be reused also and protect your table because I know exactly what you're talking about. And actually inside that box is a glitter activity. I um, saw that. Yes, it's. Uh... And, um, so, you know, nobody wants to get their working surface dirty. If you're doing this like in a memory care facility or something, they want to protect their tables. Everybody does. So I just thought it was you know, a reusable way to, um, blue and silver. Surface. <laughs> um, no, that's great. And just, you know, we appreciate the tremendous work you're doing. We've seen some of the fun, uh, time-lapse videos that you guys have shared of you assembling the boxes and the crafts. And, um, you can just tell there's a lot of heart and passion that goes into what you're doing. And, you know, we just wish you guys nothing but success and like I said, we'll have the links up on the screen, but also in the show notes and on our website. And if people are looking for good activities for their loved ones to keep them engaged, we recommend them, you know, checking out Busy Minds Box and, you know, help their loved one. But also, like you said, it helps them to come up with ideas for things to do as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This has been just an absolute pleasure. I appreciate it. It's our pleasure, too. Well, thank you so much, Christina. We'll see you soon and best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hey there, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Christina. I am a gerontologist and founder of Busy Minds Box, a monthly subscription box dedicated to helping promote brain health through activities. And today we've got five activities to go through in the January 2023 Now and Then box. Now I know at the start of every year, people start to make resolutions and things like that. I wanted to take an opportunity to look at where we've been and then where we are now and where we're going. And one of the best ways to reinforce memories is remembering them. So all of the activities in this box are designed to help you remember times gone by and try to influence times ahead. So without further ado, let's dive in. So you should have received this box in the mail. I'm gonna pop this open. And the first thing that we have here is a green box. This is actually a memory box. It's a make your own memory box. And inside you have some gold corners here, some glue dots, and a sticker that says, the best thing about memories is making them. And when you put that all together, it's gonna look something like this. 
So it's got the, we're gonna use the glue dots to glue those gold corners onto the edges there to make it look really ornate and really fancy. And we're gonna put this sticker here. These boxes are great for holding four by six photos or smaller, um, or anything like ticket stubs, notes and cards, things like that, that you wanna keep close by so that you can open the box up and relive those memories. So that is the make your own memory box that is in the box. It's kind of funny to put a box in a box, but um, I've had a memory box for so many years and I love every once in a while going through it and just seeing what really stuck out to me then and maybe like remembering something that I had forgotten, like a really, really special memory. So you can store all those in that box. The next is a What's Your Story scrapbook. So it comes like this and inside you have a journal that's blank inside. You have some cards here, they're story prompts, so they ask you some questions on the front, and on the back are uh, would you rather prompts, so you can use these to kind of spark memories to write down, or you can use these as a game, the same for the front. Um, so if you're not in the mood to write things down, but you're with some loved ones and you might wanna just reminisce about these things or answer these questions and share who you are and what your story is, you can do that. There's a um, sticker in here that you're gonna put on the front. These are custom made through Sticker Mule, so thank you to Sticker Mule. They say, this story belongs to, and there's a spot here for your name. So you are going to apply it to the front of the journal here, or scrapbook, um, and then you're gonna begin your story. You also have some stickers here, again, to kind of help jog your memory for maybe times gone by or stories that you wanna tell. There's, in this one, there is some old books there's a sticker of, and um, I think if this was mine, I would write about how much I loved going to the library with my mom and my sister when I was younger. My mom would take us to the library after school, and it was just such a really poignant time in my life, and it instilled this love of reading for me. Um, so I think that's what I would use this sticker for, but there's plenty in here. So you can use it to kind of embellish stories that you're writing about, or maybe um, maybe even invent one, who knows? So that is the What's Your Story scrapbook. Next, we have a Make Your Own Magnetic Photo Frame. So in this package here, you have a magnet um, that's on the back, it's adhesive. So what you're gonna do is peel this protective layer off and you're gonna stick down this photo frame here and then um, decorate it with glitter. So it is gonna turn out something like this and see, you can just slide your photo right in here so it's really up to you whether you what kind of picture you want if you have one that's vertical or horizontal um, and then you can just stick it to any magnetic surface like a fridge or a filing cabinet or something like that next we have a forget me not note holder kit so it is going to look something like this when it's finished um, so in the kit, it's contact paper, this little wooden stand here, a mini uh, clothespin, a glue dot, and the actual acrylic frame. So I will show you what that looks like. That acrylic frame looks like this, and there is protective coating on here. So the first thing that you do when you do this activity is peel this off and then apply the contact paper. Um, and this is meant to ha like have a note holder somewhere where you won't forget it. And you can put things like appointments, like let's say you have a hair appointment or a doctor's appointment. You can write it down on a note and clip it into the note holder. Um, you can also use it for photos or any kind of notes that you don't want to forget about. Maybe somebody sent you a birthday postcard or something and you want to pop it on there. So feel free to do that. I would love to know what you use it for and where you put it. So I think mine might go in my kitchen, but you might want to put it like next to your front door so you see it on the way out if you're using it for appointment reminders or something like that. And the last thing we have is a large print 
word search. So it's from Merriam-Webster. Um, I figured if we're gonna be writing our stories, what do you write with but words? And so to exercise those language skills, I wanted to include something in here that would help us do that. So um, some people received word fill-in, some people got crosswords or word searches, um, but they are large prints, so they're a little bit easier to see. They're, you're not like squinting as you look at them. Um, and this book just kind of help us really find some words that maybe we forgot about um, and help us to formulate those stories for our scrapbook. So that is the end of the Now and Then box. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you got one and you have a favorite thing and you post it on social media, please tag us or email us photos. Let us know what you think. We really want to know. Um, and let us know down below if you didn't get one, which one you think your favorite would be. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next month. Bye. Thank you for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. We invite you to visit us at allhomecarematters.com where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions, every form is read and responded to. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or watch the show on our official YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We'd also like to say thank you again to the founder of Busy Minds Box, Christina Lubovsky. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you next time here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.